FTC to become ASEAN Rural Development Model. Good afternoon, I'm Cynthia Arthur. You're watching News on 2. The Rural Transformation Centre, RTC, a brainchild of Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak, will be used as a model for rural development among ASEAN countries. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said several countries have voiced their interest in emulating RTC in their countries. Some of the countries, adding that Malaysia not only develops rural areas through the concept of urbanization, but also brings urban thinking to rural areas. Pada tahun 1990, apabila DEB tamat, kita lihat bahawa kadar itu telah dapat diturunkan dengan banyak program-program transformation yang telah dibawa ke Jawa Bandar. Tetapi kini pendekatan kita di Malaysia adalah berbeza. Kita mahu uh, bukan saja membawa uh, urbanisasi ke Jawa Bandar, tetapi kita juga mahu membawa pemikiran bandar ke, ke luar bandar. Datuk Seri Dr. Ahmad Zahid said this in a press conference held after the opening of the ASEAN level ministers and senior officials meeting on rural development and poverty eradication in Kuala Lumpur. The internet penetration rate of 70% in Malaysia is higher than the average Asian internet penetration of only 38.5%. Communications and Multimedia Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Saleh Said Karuak said with this, Malaysians should benefit from the digital world to compete in business by becoming smart digital creators who can create online business activities. Datuk Sri Dr. Saleh said the use of internet has penetrated the lives of the people worldwide so much so that it has become a second life. He also admitted that there still remains a digital gap, especially involving its penetration in the urban and rural areas, which needs to be addressed by the government. Datuk Sri Dr. Saleh said that the digital world has many advantages such as enabling long-distance communications, expanding knowledge and understanding of the world, ordering goods, sending text and obtaining information quickly. In saying this, the minister said of the 70% internet penetration in Malaysia, the usage of WhatsApp, which is an application used to send messages, images, audio or video, is the highest. The founder of the digital currency platform BCMY Private Limited, Datuk Muhammad Azrainuddin, said a guideline should be set on the use of cryptocurrency to ensure that all data relating to it will be monitored by Bank Negara Malaysia, BNM. This will also ensure that any activities done using currency will be executed in a transparent manner. Datuk Muhammad Azrainuddin said the data will indirectly help the government in addressing the issue of money laundering and financing a terrorism in Malaysia. Punya langkah, mekanisme tu, macam mana untuk mengawal? Macam mana untuk mengawal kalau ada perbelanjaan dilakukan? Adakah satu individu tu kita tak tahu sos ofat kan jadi payah? Kita tak tahu dia mana datangnya duit ni dibelanjakan tanpa kita tahu sos dia. Dan dengan adanya guideline dari tu yang dikeluarkan oleh BNM, kita boleh follow dia punya guideline untuk inilah. No the customer supaya elak dia punya anti money laundering punya atau bahaya isu lah. Datuk Muhammad Azrainuddin said Philippines and Singapore are among the countries in the region which have implemented guidelines on the use of cryptocurrency. Currently, his company uses a global license for cryptocurrency operation from three countries: Singapore, Switzerland, and Japan. Earlier, BNM Governor Tan Sri Muhammad Ibrahim said the central bank will issue guidelines on cryptocurrencies by the end of the year. Police are now on the lookout for three suspects involved in the theft of several gold bars and gold items worth 1.9 million ringgit in Jalan Siram Batuworth, Pulau Pinang on September 25th. Pulau Pinang CID Chief SAC Zainal Sama said of the three suspects, one is believed to have been shot in his left arm as they were trying to escape from the police. Dia lari ya mendapatkan rawatan itu yang kita nak urge kepada nak minta ah bantuan daripada orang ramai sekiranya ataupun daripada klinik-klinik ah yang mana yang berjumpa dengan ni supaya lepuhkan kepada pihak kita. 
During investigation, police found the vehicle used by the suspects at a parking lot of an apartment building in Ampang Jajar, Batuweth, Pulau Pinang. The vehicle, which had a fake registration number, was found in a state of ruin as it crashed into a lorry while escaping. Police had earlier arrested 11 suspects between the ages of 26 and 45 in Selangor, Negeri Sembilan and Johor and seized two gold bars, some jewellery and cash. All the suspects are remanded until October 10th to facilitate investigation under Section 395 and 397 of the Penal Code. In the September 25th incident, suspects armed with axes and irons escaped with a sack containing gold bars and jewellery worth an estimated 11 kilograms carried by two gold processing factory workers. A family of four were found dead in their house at Jalan Utama 41, Rini residence, Mutiara Rini, Johor Baru, yesterday. The deceased were identified as R. Pubalan, 52, his wife Pijaya, 42, 14-year-old son P. P. Shervindan, and 9-year-old daughter P. Krishna. Pubalan was found hanging in a room on the upper floor of the house while his wife Jaya, who was reported to be ill and undergoing hemodialysis, was found dead on a bed near the living room. Meanwhile, their son and daughter were found in another room with signs of strangulation on their necks. Iskandar Putri OCPD Assistant Commissioner Nur Hashi Muhammad said a note was found by police in the room where Pubalan was found. They, however, did not find any tool used to strangle both the children. According to initial investigation, it was believed Pubalan had killed his children and subsequently killed himself. The death of his wife has yet to be ascertained. That concludes this afternoon's edition of News on 2. In our top story, Brazilian police foil attempted biggest bank heist in the world. Join us again at 7 tonight for more updates. Till then, I'm Cynthia Arthur and thank you for watching.